from Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. A South African inventor has developed a new flexible wing, which he believes could have application in everything from wind energy and sailing to aviation and motoring. Inspired in part by the flights of the Cape Vulture, South African architect and inventor Robert Bray has developed a morphing wind concept, which he has now patented internationally. With support from engineering group Woolley Parsons, the wing has been applied to a vertical access wind turbine, which could become an alternative to rooftop solar in the embedded generation markets. The turbine has been tested by the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, which has wind tunnel facilities at its campus in Pretoria. Brayfoil founder Robert Bray and Woolley Parsons CEO Denver Dreyer talked to us about the wing concept, the development of the wing turbine and prospects for commercialization. Birds have this ability to change the shape of their wings. Uh, they're able to flare out and land on the spot. We can't do that with our wings. We've got to come in and have these kilometer run long runways. So I, I, I focused on how did the birds do it and then I tried very hard to replicate the idea in a, in a mechanical method. And I knew that I couldn't build an aircraft to prove it. It's uh, not within the scope of a single person to actually get an aircraft going. You need a whole company. So I thought, let me rather build a wing sail for a yacht. And the added difficulty with a wing sail for a yacht is that it has to reverse lift from one side to the other because the yacht has to tack. So I set myself this goal of achieving uh, a mechanical solution to what is biomimicry really. The obvious place for an automatic sail is on ships. So yes, uh, automatic sail works, we've tested it, and the theory is perfect. And we applied that uh, uh, in a simulation to the deck of a Suez Max, which is the size of, of tanker that goes through the Suez Canal. And we found that we could save 25% of it of the fuel used on the tanker. But the disadvantage was that the ship had to stay with the wind on the beam, which means it has to tack, which means it leaves the shipping lanes, which means it's going to take longer from port to port. So all the advantages of the saving of fuel were lost. And I then started thinking about the use of this wing on a turbine. If I could put it onto a turbine on ships, uh, we could then get the wind from any direction. The opportunity in the cities is for embedded power, the power on the building. So our simulations are showing now that a building has uh, on average around the corners and over the parapets a 19% increase in wind speed. That's across all wind directions and all wind speeds. Uh, not taking into account prevailing winds. And the, that 19% increase in velocity equates to a 59% increase in power. So if we take advantage of that uh, building as a collector, it collects the wind and also the tall buildings elevate you. So we're getting huge opportunities that are missed inside the cities. So I started working on this design to satisfy that need in energy. Uh, and I believe we've proven today that the concept works 100%. It's self-starting, which is very difficult with a Darius-type turbine, it's a vertical axis. Uh, and uh, we now have learned so much from this first example. It's by no means optimized, but it works. And we can take it from here and we can take it through to a commercial product. Rob approached us about, about two to three years ago with this concept, and an incredible concept at the time for us as an organization. And we, we sat and we worked and we took the idea, and our challenge was how do we take his idea and just turn it into something which works in terms of the science and the physics. And so we had two or three engineers assigned to it, looking at various aspects of it. So we took the concept and it was, a, it was an iterative process. We started with what we thought was an idea that could work and we took two steps forward, three steps back. Eventually we started moving into a direction. We did all the finite element analysis, the flow analysis. We tested the concepts and eventually the ideas started merging into drawings, which we then moved on to a contractor with and they constructed it. So we've got incredible engineers and innovators in this country and, and this is just testimony or testament to the type or the caliber of people that we have in this country. Again, it's, it's, a, it's an entire value chain of people. It's the, it's the works of genius and the genius like Rob that brings the idea or Matt that, that brings the idea to the table and then the engineers that can take that idea and turn it into something which works in terms of the science and the contractors who just construct it and build it and ultimately you know we pass this on to the the rest of the world and we transform the world and this is the type of people we've got in this country. We're going on a road show 
and we're going to start talking to the big industrial players to partner with us in a research and development program. We're not, there, not out there to just make instant money and sell the patent. We would like to get a, a partnership going where we can uh, grow and learn together and eventually reach a commercial product. Other news making headlines. Detailed job summit package includes 100 billion rand for black industrial firms. The details framework agreement unveiled by President Sol Ramaphosa at the much anticipated job summit includes a reaffirmation of commitments by the financial sector to invest 100 billion rand in the black owned industrial enterprises over the coming five years. Through this framework agreement, we are demonstrating that we are capable of developing a new social compact for jobs, for growth, and for transformation of our economy. This presidential job summit is just the start of the process of serious engagement that will intensify in the coming months. That's Krimo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.